Happy New Year, happy 2013. If you, by chance last night, had a little too much fun, perhaps got a little sorry on the rocks, we have the cure for you. And I'm gonna show you how to make a really great homemade Bloody Mary without using a mix. And I promise it's gonna be worth a couple extra steps. Start with uh, the tomato juice. I like to use just a really good tomato juice. And if it's summertime, you can actually puree or food process some ripe tomatoes and then just put them through a fine sieve and to get all of the solid out and use that juice. That's good. that's like delicious if you've got any tomatoes growing in your backyard or from the farmer's market. That's the best. We're gonna use four ounces of that. We're gonna use two ounces of your favorite vodka. Oh, little spill, never hurt anybody. A little Worcestershire, like maybe two dashes of Worcestershire. Three of Tabasco. Then we're gonna do a little citrus. And of course, fresh squeezed is way better. And I'm using this funky old little citrus squeezer that, juicer that I have. So this is half of an ounce. We just need one tablespoon then. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of celery salt, just a little. Now, if you're a New Yorker, then I know what you're thinking, and that is that I have to put some fresh grated horseradish in there. But that's really kind of more of a regional thing. Um, not everybody loves horseradish, so I'm gonna keep it out of this one, but this would, that'd be the time you do a little fresh um, horseradish. Before I add my ice and actually mix this, I'm gonna just uh, kind of decorate the rim of the glass. This is a really easy trick to getting those, um, that garnish like sugar or salt on the rim of a glass that you'll get out at a restaurant sometimes. This is a, just a little bit of paper towel that's a little bit wet. Just kind of run it along the rim. And I hope I have enough still in there. And then I've mixed together a little garnish of salt and pepper and celery salt. And then I'm just gonna kind of push it around in there. It's just in a saucer. So I'm gonna get a little ice. Now this is one of the secrets to a great Bloody Mary, and I think it's like one of the less known kind of aspects. When you're making, let's say, a martini, everybody wants to know shaken or stirred. But when you're making a Bloody Mary, there's absolutely no question, and it's neither shaken nor stirred. It's a little technique called rolling. If you actually shake your Bloody Mary, you're gonna get a foam on the tomato juice, and you're gonna crush down that really awesome texture that's in the tomato juice and you're gonna really lose one of the best things about your Bloody Mary. So this is called rolling. It really, you're just sort of tipping it one way and then the other, making sure, and I'm trying to make it not leak since I don't think my top's all the way on there. But you don't wanna do the shaky thing. And um, now, we're just gonna pour it in this glass. And I like to garnish, purists don't garnish it with a celery stick, but I love a little celery. And I like to have a little lime in there too, just in case you wanna kind of freshen that up and, and drink as you go. Um, so, Happy New Year, and hope this makes you a little less sorry on the rocks. <laughs>